Buongiorno and welcome back to Daryl Lorette Cafe. I am your host Daryl Lorette. Well, it is finally lunchtime and uh, I am about to have lunch. I got a pot of chicken noodle soup on the stove and I got some sardines here and tomato sauce and uh, <clears throat> got some phlegm in the throat. Anyway, I just uh, finally got to work out today. I did my laundry this morning. And then I uh, had a workout, went grocery shopping, and then came home and took a shower. So uh, I've already had a full day. So uh, I haven't eaten since this morning. So right now I'm going to stick my face in this bowl and have some fish. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, what a day, what a day. The day is only half over. I've been up since 3.30 this morning. My God. Ooh, good stuff. So we're still waiting for a phone call. Do I got a job this weekend or what? I'm feeling kind of like I don't have a job. Like I always get uh, certain feelings associated with either getting a job for a day or two or so or not, you know. I usually feel a certain way about it and that way I kind of can tell whether or not I've got, I, got a, I, I got a job. It's kind of like a, an intuition of sorts. It's bizarre. But I'm not feeling all that positive about it. You know, I'm not, feel, I'm not feeling like that uh, blissful ignorance that I got a job. Yeah, baby. You know, I'm not feeling that. So if I'm not feeling that, that, that that's a bad thing. I'm very tempted to call the agency and find out whether they have any news about about the project. Very tempted, let me tell you, and I, I may later on this afternoon do just that if I don't get a phone call. Because sitting on my hands waiting for a phone call for something like this is like this is important. I uh, you know I I like to uh, get involved as much as I can. Even if it means bugging the agency and the people who work there. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to call them and say, Yeah, did uh, you guys uh, hear anything about the uh, the project that uh, we talked about last night? Is there any news? Uh, you know, is it uh, is it a go or, or is it uh, not a go? You know, I got to find out one way or another. They want me by Friday. They want me from Friday to Monday. That's like four days. I got to know today. Today would be great. Tomorrow, well, you know, tomorrow's, a, tomorrow's Thursday, and then it's Friday. You know, they want me to work on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I'd like to know today. I don't want to wait until the day before. That's like short notice. When they do that to me, I remember one time I, uh, I got phoned up Friday night, and I was asked whether or not I wanted to work on 16 Blocks, Bruce Willis movie. Directed by Richard Donner back in 2005, the end of the May, the end, the end of the May, this is the end of May. It was like just before my 40th birthday, and I said, "Sure, yeah." I didn't even know what it was. They called me up, you know, said, "Do you want to work on this project?" Don't tell me what it is. Just tell me, uh, you know, you know, you got to be so. You got to be in such and such a place tomorrow morning, six o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. You know, you can't even get a bus to go to Toronto from Hamilton at six o'clock in the morning. I had to go up Friday night, spend the entire night up there. So I was up in Toronto for like seven hours before I had to start work. 
I literally hung around the set all night. There was a Tim Hortons there, and I drank coffee and ate donuts all night. Talked to the security guys who were working guarding the set. One of them offered me uh, to sleep in one of the cars <laughs> that was parked there as part of the uh, part of the film. I said, "No thanks. I don't need." The last thing I want to do right now is sleep. So I got like, they said two or three days work. Well, they said three days work. I got two. No. First day I was working with his stunt double, Bruce Lee's stunt, uh, Bruce Lee, Bruce Willis's stunt double. That was on a Saturday. And I was so exhausted because I was up all night. I had worked 12 hours, 12, 12 and a half hours. I was so exhausted that I had to go home and take a shower and get some sleep. And I had to be there the next morning. I can't remember what time it was. I think maybe 7 o'clock or something like that. And I was like an hour late because I couldn't get a bus until the bus didn't leave Hamilton on the weekends and holidays. The bus, the bus schedule is a little later. So I couldn't get a bus. See, I had to be there at 7 o'clock. I couldn't get a bus until 7 o'clock. So I, I wound up getting there at 8 o'clock, and they had not started yet. And I got there, and I apologized and told them that, you know, i sorry I couldn't get here any sooner, but I couldn't catch a bus until an hour ago, you know, and I got here as soon as I could. And they, uh, you know, I told them I was all ready to go. I, I was in wardrobe and whatnot, and all I needed to do was get my props from the prop guy. <laughs> I literally ran around the block looking for the prop guy three or four times, you know. I stopped and asked an AD, I think it was, you know, where's the prop guy? <laughs> I need my prop. And I, I literally ran around the block looking for the prop guy. And finally he said, well, he's up there, you know, and I kept running around and it was like, I don't see him. And it turned out he was like stuck in an alcove, just sort of out of, out of the way hiding almost. And you couldn't see him because you just walked right by the guy. And that was frantically running around the block looking for the guy. He was crazy. And I still remember it really well like uh, on that on that Sunday the day Bruce Willis worked we we're all standing or at least I was and there was a bunch of people standing in back of me all, all extras more or less and uh, all of a sudden um, Bruce Willis walks down the sidewalk on my left side and I'm facing up towards where everybody's at and I'm standing literally in the middle of the street and, and Bruce Willis walks right down and he looks at me he looks over at me and I look over at him and I think oh you know I don't know where the cameras are and I don't know where the director is set up and all that stuff I'm totally you know out of the loop there because you know that's just the way it is when you're on a set like that <laughs> you're just totally you know you do what you're told and that's about it so he comes walking, Bruce Willis comes walking down, you know, a little, uh, you know, Bruce Willis, you know, if, if you've seen, seen seen him in a movie, you know what he's like. So he comes walking down, and I think, oh, he must be, uh, they must have the cameras, the monitors and whatnot, the director must be back there, <laughs> and he's going to check the dailies, or, you know, check the check the shot we just shot. And it turns out that there, there was a, uh, a porta potty there, and he was going to the, use the bathroom. And I'm standing there watching him. It's like, oh, he's just going over there to talk to the director. <laughs> he's not talking to the director. He was going for a leak. Anyway, that's my story for today, and it's true because I was there. So this is Daryl Arett here at Daryl Arett Cafe, wishing you a good day. We'll see you later.